Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Driscoll with Omaha Integrated Health, and today I want to make a video about type 2 diabetes, some of the problems that we're seeing with the patients that are coming in with type 2 diabetes today, and the drugs that they're giving you for type 2 diabetes, and all the problems we're seeing with those things as well. If you're like most of the patients, uh, at some point you visited a family physician, you went to your endocrinologist, somebody ran some blood labs and they discovered that you had type 2 diabetes. Now initially, most of the patients are scared, but the doctor will comfort you and they'll lull you into thinking that everything's going to be okay. Sure, you have this disease and yes, it can be deadly, but the doctor explains that it's controllable, it's treatable, it's manageable, whatever that means, and that the pharmaceutical companies have plenty of drugs for type 2 diabetes, lots and lots of drugs, and boy, they write about those drugs. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of medications that are designed for type 2 diabetes, and if you just take these pills, and you diet, you lose weight, and exercise, they explain, well, we can manage it, we can control it, and you can live a relatively normal life. Then they give you a little pamphlet, they pat you on the butt, they send you out the door, and most of the time you're going to leave the office with a lot more questions than you came in with probably hundreds of questions. So you likely left the office feeling a little bit uneasy about the disease, but then you're pretty confident that everything's gonna be okay, but you don't realize that that day is likely just the beginning of a terrible, destructive, lifelong crisis that is brewing inside your body. You probably also didn't realize it at the time, but those pills that your doctor prescribed that are designed to treat diabetes, they don't treat diabetes. They don't do anything for diabetes. They don't help it. They don't treat it. They don't manage it. They don't control it. All they do is treat symptoms of the diabetes. They mask the disease. We'll get into that later. So why does that even matter? Why Don't we want to treat the symptoms? Well, of course we do. But if that's all we do, we got a problem. Unlike a cold where symptom relief will get you by for a couple weeks while the body heals, this disease doesn't heal. It is chronic, it's degenerative, it is progressive, meaning that if all you do is take drugs, you're likely always gonna have it. It's gradually gonna get worse, and as time goes by, regardless of whether you take the pills as instructed or not, you're going to get worse. So, what is type two diabetes? What are we actually dealing with? Type two diabetes is a chronic de degenerative disease that occurs when the body doesn't correctly regulate sugar or glucose for energy. When too much sugar builds up in the bloodstream, disorders of the circulatory system, the nervous system, and the immune system start to occur. There's really two central problems that cause the sugar to build up in the blood. Number one, the cells in the body become more and more resistant to insulin. That's the hormone that's responsible for taking the sugars out of the blood and putting it into the cells where we need it. And that way you get to have energy. If that doesn't happen, then we've got a lot of problems and your cells will essentially die. Number two, as the disease progresses, the pancreas can start to, tr to struggle to produce the proper amount of insulin to maintain your health. In either case, the sugars don't enter the cells and it results in high blood sugar levels and those high blood sugar levels wreak literal havoc throughout the body. They damage vital organs and ultimately they can result in organ failure. Now, diabetes is becoming one of the most common diseases globally affecting about 400 million people. It's estimated that one in four of us is gonna develop the condition some point in our lifetime. But despite this staggering, this this uh, depressing statistic, a lot of people go misdiagnosed or undiagnosed because they don't really recognize the symptoms. And, and in fact, a lot of the symptoms kind of blend in with other chronic conditions that you can have. So a lot of times a doctor might treat that symptom and not even realize that the patient's diabetic unless they run the proper labs. So that can lead to more side effects. And ultimately, if you have diabetes, the ultimate side effects are gonna be things like blindness, nerve damage, neuropathy, kidney failure, heart failure, limb amputation, and ultimately it can lead to death. Initially, you're, and we'll even later down the road, you can see things like fatigue. Fatigue's probably the number one complaint that I get in the, in the, in the, in the clinic. Uh, blurred vision, increased thirst, frequent urination, slow healing wounds, uh, frequent infections, uh, weight gain, easy to gain weight, difficult to lose, especially if you're on glipizide, glimepride, or glibride, or if you're taking insulin. Those are weight uh, gaining drugs. 
The glipizide glimpirine glibride causes the pancreas to produce insulin, and insulin is a fat packing drug. One of the primary things that it does is help your body retain fat. So here it is, they're telling you diet, lose weight, and exercise, and then they give you drugs that cause you to, to gain weight. But anyways, those are the primary symptoms that we see. So if all we do is we keep focusing on these symptoms, we, we're going to see bigger problems, which is what we're seeing now. So it's time to change the way we treat type 2 diabetes. Now, please listen to me carefully. I want you to understand something. I want you to consider this. We now have more research for type 2 diabetes than we've ever had in any time in history. We have more doctors, we have more treatment facilities, we have more knowledge, we have more data, we have more books, we have more computers, more specialists, we have more medications than any time in history. And yet, you know what else we have more of? Type 2 diabetics. So why is it getting worse? Something's obviously desperately wrong with what we're doing and how we treat type 2 diabetes. We've got to stop chasing rainbows. We've got to stop focusing on just the symptoms. We've got to stop just focusing on the results of the disease, the symptom, and, and, and start looking at the causes, why you have diabetes in the first place. So when your doctor says they want to control diabetes, <laughs> you've got to ask yourself, what does that even mean? How are they going to accomplish such a, such a feat? You could go to every doctor in just about any city in the entire United States and they're all pretty much going to tell you the same stinking things. Diet, lose weight, and exercise, and take these wonderful pills. Now, there's value to some of that. I mean, it's nice to have uh, uh, dietary changes, especially if you eat a bunch of crap. It's good to lose weight. You don't need to be overweight. overweight. That causes a lot of problems in and of itself. It's good to exercise and... Uh, I have a problem with the pill part, and we'll, we'll talk about here in, this here in a second. But for the most part, those are pretty good recommendations, and it's going to help you in your health in general. But is that it? Is that the answer? Most of the patients, eventually, they're going to discover at some point that their doctor's recommendations, even if they follow it to a T, their health will still decline. So as explained earlier, type 2 diabetes is a chronic, degenerative, progressive disease that damages and destroys the body from the inside. It causes multiple organ failures and tissue damage throughout the entire body. And since the medications are only treating the symptoms of the disease, but they don't do anything for the diabetes itself, the underlying causes of it, this allows the condition to be progressively getting worse. So patients find that over time, they'll typically not only take more medications, but they'll also take more uh, a, a more extreme dose, a higher dose of the medication. And what they'll also find is they start taking other medications as well. And we'll talk about that in a second. But once a patient starts taking insulin, they've reached the final stages. There's really usually nothing else that the doctor can do. At this point, the doctor's pretty much emptied the toolbox. They really don't have any other solutions. The solutions are at an end and they just keep increasing the insulin. They'll end up playing shuffle games with the patient's medications and they'll constantly experiment with different drugs at different doses and until they're confident that they pretty much met all the meaningful options that, that they have and they're exhausted and there's nothing else they can do. So you may not be a doctor, but does that sound like a path to health? Does that sound like that's a way to get healthy? Is diet, lose weight, and exercise and take the meds really the answer? I think if we dissect each one of those recommendations, you're going to find that each one of them has a lot of problems with it. So let's start with diet. Uh, just telling the patient diet, lose weight, and exercise and take medications, that creates more questions than it does answers. For example, which diet are you supposed to do? The South Beach diet, the keto diet, the, the American Diabetes Association diet, some other diet, which one? What's the magic diet? The zone diet? What's the patient supposed to do, though, if that diet doesn't help? What do they do if the diet helps, but they still have to take their drugs? What if they follow the diet and their sugars still go up? So most of my patients tell me they follow the doctor's dietary recommendations the best they could, but their sugars still went up. So what are they supposed to do? And what about losing weight? Weight is by far the most dis discussed topic by both doctor and patient in the diabetic world. Everybody wants to talk about weight. But the problem is, weight is not the cause of diabetes, type 1 or 2. If weight is the cause of diabetes, then how come just about half, 45% of all type 2 diabetics are considered average weight or skinny? In fact, why do skinny people even have type 2 diabetes if weight is the issue? 
Certainly, they don't have to lose weight. If weight's the cause, why are there people that weigh much more than you but don't suffer from type 2 diabetes? If weight is the cause, what are you supposed to do when, the weight, when you lose the weight and you still have diabetes? And while we're at it, how much weight are you supposed to lose? What's the magic number? Is there a magic number? My doctor said lose 100 pounds. My doctor said lose 50 pounds. Well, they're just guessing. And, and we know there's a benefit to it. But look, there wasn't too long ago, I had a patient come to my office. And the first words out of his mouth were, I don't know what we're going to do, but whatever it is, my wife says, don't let me lose weight. Why would he say that? Because to start with, he was already looking borderline anorexic. I mean, he's just a very skinny guy. The last thing he needed to do was lose weight. He was very, very skinny, and he was still a full-blown type 2 diabetic. Weight was obviously not the problem, certainly not for him, and he's not alone. Since about 45% of the type 2 diabetics are average or skinny weight, that's about 180 million people that are average or skinny type 2 diabetics. Now, over the years, just to put you into some kind of perspective here, over the years, I've helped hundreds and hundreds of patients reverse their type 2 diabetes. But in all those years, never once have I had a conversation with a single one of those patients where I said, we need to work on losing weight. And yet, we're very successful at reversing their diabetes. So why? If weight was the issue, how could I even say that? It's not the issue. There's no doubt that weight is an aggravant, okay? We know that it aggravates type 2 diabetes. It can aggravate anything for that matter, but it's not the cause of the diabetes. So then we talk about exercise. What about exercise? Exercise is another frustration for the patient because the doctor just tells them that exercise is important, but that instruction just leaves further explanation, right? Again, the patient leaves with a lot of questions. How much exercise are they supposed to do? When should they exercise? How long are they supposed to exercise? What type of exercise are effective? What if they exercise and their blood sugars still go up? I had a patient that was exercising two hours a day, every day, but her numbers were gradually going up, going up, going up. And so she had increased the intensity. She tried hit exercises. She's doing all this stuff. And she just was at her wit's end. She's like, man, no matter what I do, no matter how much I exercise, I can't get my numbers down. Two hours a day is a long time. And yet she was really dedicated to trying to diet and lose weight and exercise. Anyways, her numbers were still getting worse and she didn't know what to do. So she ended up coming in our clinic. So then what about drugs? Well, what about all those drugs they claim to have for type 2 diabetes? If those drugs work the way they seem to imply that they're going to, why does the doctor keep adding more? Why does the dosage keep increasing? Why do most patients end up not only taking diabetic drugs, but adding other non-diabetic medications like blood pressure and cholesterol and acid reflux and pain meds and antidepressants or some other drug for some other new problem that they now suffer from, from the diabetes or something that diabetes gave them or something that maybe those pills gave them. Maybe they're taking a, a drug for the other drug to counter the side effects, right? We all know that happens. And on top of that, if the drugs are working, how come the diabetes keeps getting worse? Most of my patients, I mean, look, how many patients have you ever met that had type 2 diabetes? They started off on 500 milligrams of metformin and they never went any further. I don't know anybody like that. They always go, get worse. They always go on more medications and they always take stronger meds. So some people say, well, I've only been on metformin. Well, you started off at 500, then you went to 1,000, then you went to 2,000 eventually. And usually that's where they max out because too many people, you, you can't really handle, your body doesn't do well with more than 2,000 2, milligrams. I mean, it doesn't do well with it at all. But once you hit the 2,000 one, I mean, you're really looking at some huge episodes of diarrhea and some kidney issues. So these pat answers that are coming from the medical profession, they're not solving the crisis and the results are profound. No wonder it's the third leading cause of death. Can losing weight help you? Well, that depends. Can exercise help? That depends. Can your diet help? That depends. Can taking drugs help? That depends as well. Look, I'm not trying to just say this and repeat, but why do I keep saying it? It depends because everybody's circumstances are different. The causes of everybody's disease are different. The underlying issues that cause you to have diabetes and the things that broke inside, they're all different for everybody. So we really don't have the same answer for everybody. So those things can help you if they're done properly, but if they're done improperly, they can also hurt you. And that's why you really need to be guided through this. So what can we do? Well, if you wanna just keep treating the symptoms, 
Keep doing what you're doing. But if you want to treat the causes, if you're going to work on your health and not just mask the problem, then I'd suggest scheduling an appointment with me uh, here at Omaha Integrated Health. We offer a free consultation, and that way we can see if you're a good candidate for care. If we if you if we look like you, we're going to work together and things look okay, and you can become a patient, and you not don't have some other underlying condition, and you're type two diabetic, I can help you. And we can address those symptoms, but we really want to address the causes of the disease. So keep in mind that when you treat and eliminate the causes, the symptoms tend to go away on their own. So I'm not really concerned about the symptoms. Putting this in some kind of perspective, let's say that you're a boxer. And every time you go into the ring, you have a huge headache every time you walk out. Well, the solution is not to give you pain meds. The solution isn't to cover it up, to mask the headache. The solution is stop boxing. <clears throat> if you're type 2 diabetic and your health is continually getting worse, the solution isn't to just treat rising blood sugars. The, treat, the, the, the solution is to find out why they're rising, why you're getting sicker, why your health is failing. When we do that, the sugars will come down naturally. But we really need to find out what is broke. Doesn't that make more sense? So how do we reverse diabetes? First, we need to define what it means to reverse diabetes. What we mean by reverse diabetes is that we find and address the underlying causes, which in turn can lower the blood sugar. So here's how this works. As a patient starts getting healthy again, and the blood sugar starts to decline, the need for the drugs gradually decreases as well. As the need for the drugs decrease, then we can deal with them and their regular doctor, whoever it is that typically prescribes their drugs, they can lower the drugs when it's necessary. And when the time comes, maybe even get off the drug completely. So it just depends on where they're at in their level of care. As they progress, we start seeing drugs drop one by one, but we always are working and we're always concerned with their health so that it will allow their body to let them get off those drugs little pieces at a time. We don't want you to ever just stop the drugs and then come into the clinic. That doesn't work. That doesn't help. It makes things actually more complicated for me. So I'll give you an example. We had a guy that come in, and he was when he started, he was a whopping 14.9. His numbers were crazy high. He was already taking insulin, and he was on metformin as well, and his blood sugars were not getting under control. But as time went by, slowly but surely, his sugars came down, and his doctor was lowering his dosage accordingly. And the, it was probably just a little bit under six months before his A1C finally reached a 5.5. And by the time he'd reached 5.5, he was off of everything. He was able to get off all his drugs. That was several years ago. And as of this video, he's still not taking any medication. So that is not an unusual scenario at our clinic. We see this happen all the time. So how do we accomplish this? Well, we make every effort to work as a team with both the patient and the regular doctor to help the patient get as healthy as their body will let them. Now, look, we're not magic. Just like any other health profession, we have limitations. And sometimes that patient has an extensive amount of damage. If the patient's waited too long, maybe they've had an amputation. Maybe their kidneys have already failed and they've lost a kidney. Maybe they got a previous heart attack from this. Um, <clears throat> Maybe they've got cancer. I can't erase those things. But that doesn't mean that the patient can't reverse their diabetes and get healthy again. We can work around them. It's just going to cause a hindrance. It's going to cause the, the care to slow down. They just probably won't get as well as fast. Now, I say that with a caveat. If, if it's too bad, like, let's say that you're on kidney dialysis. I can't really help you. Because the things that they want you to do once you start kidney dialysis are going to contradict with the things that I need to help you do with your diabetes. So once you've hit dialysis, uh, I, I'm not going to be the guy to see. But as you can see, our clinic takes a completely different approach to care than what you're probably used to and what you probably see out there. But please consider what I'm about to say. I want you really think carefully about this. Haven't you <coughs> ever wondered why you have diabetes and your brother, your sister, your aunt, your friend, your church member, whoever else, doesn't. Why are you stuck with this disease? How come other people can go about their life and never give two cents about their blood sugars? Most people, quite frankly, they're not even aware what their blood sugars are. They, they, they have no idea. You're aware of it because something's desperately wrong and you had to address it. But what was it that went wrong? What changed in your system? What broke? How come they can go to McDonald's? They can grab a Big Mac, a large fry, they can slam it down with a virtual two liter pop and nothing happens. 
But you, you take a couple fries off their plate and your blood sugar skyrocket over 200. Something's wrong with your system. Something changed. It wasn't like that when you were young. So what happened? That's what we want to find out. That's what we need to find out. If you're ever going to get better, if you're ever going to conquer this thing, I have no interest in treating, managing, or controlling diabetes. As a functional medicine doctor, instead, I want to reverse the diabetes. Nothing else. Period. That's all I concentrate. We want to lower that A1C naturally so that you're able to get off the medications. Period. Now, if that's something that you'd be interested in, your first visit with me is going to be free. We don't charge because we really don't know whether or not you're going to be a patient or not. So your first consultation is free. We can go over things with you. We can look at your history. We can see what you've done in the past. We can look at the trajectory, see how sick that you're getting, um, what things are going wrong. If you have any labs, please bring those with you to your visit. Now, I don't need labs all the way back from kindergarten. We're really looking at labs that we've got more recent. If you've got something within the last year, that's gonna be beneficial to me. Beyond that, uh, there's a lot of changes that can, can occur. I certainly don't need anything beyond two years. Just bring anything that you think will help us help you. So call 402-932-5929, schedule your free consultation. I'll sit down with you, we'll go over your history, we'll go over the previous treatments that you've had, I'll look through those labs, I will tell you things that I find that maybe they haven't addressed with you, and then if it looks like you're a good candidate for care, then we'll set up a plan for you and we'll tell you what we can do to help you and we'll go from there. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful day. I love what I do, I love my patients, I really have a passion for this, and quite frankly, I do a good job. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in the clinic. Until then, have a great day.